Okay, so a loop invariant. Um, well, there's many different ways of looking at it, but this is pretty good. Wikipedia, as usual. Uh, an invariant of a loop is a property that holds before and after each repetition. It is a logical assertion, sometimes programmed as an assertion, which actually we're going to do, in a way. Um, knowing it's invariant is essential for understanding the effect of a loop. And actually, this is true. Um, what the loop invariant is, it's something which is true throughout you know, the execution of the loop. All right, and we we will be a bit more specific about that um, as we go on. But for the moment, it's just something which is true at every step of the loop. All right, and, and really knowing this thing is important for knowing if the loop is working or not. That's really what it comes down to. And typically, when we write loops, um, we're always thinking about their loop invariants. We're just not talking. We're not just you know sort of verbalizing it or even writing it in that way. But often when I write, especially for some kind of loop over an array, I will often be thinking about what the loop invariant is. And I might even make a note, a comment. Or if I'm feeling really keen, I'll write an, a Java assertion to check it. Um, the cool thing about Wiley is that you know, we can actually write loop invariants. So here's, here's a real simple loop. Uh, this is um, summing over the integers. Um, and I. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? I wonder if we can just do this. A, hey, bring it back. So what I want you to think about, whilst I just boot this up, is I want you to think about what is a loop invariant here? What is a property of this loop which is true for each step of the loop? In fact, I think there's only one. That, well, there's only one particularly useful one. And I'm just going to boot up Wiley so that we can look at it in Wiley, which will be potentially helpful. OK, OK, so what do we think? Thoughts, thoughts, hands up, thoughts. Yes? Items never changes. Actually, that is true. That is, that is an invariant of the, of the, of the loop. Uh, in fact, uh, I can actually express that in Wiley. OK, it's difficult. I have no way to express before and after for a single variable. So there's no way for me to say, you know, I have to say uh, for this loop invariant where items equals something, but I'm not sure what to put there. In some systems, you can write this, and you can write a little tick which says the before version. Um, in Wiley, what we can actually do is we can do like this. Uh, we can go, right? And actually, that is actually achieving that. And we're going to see uh, for the flag problem how that might be helpful as well. So that's true, yes. Cool, yes. OK, so, so that is, tr that is, uh, is that true or not? So that's actually not true. All right, and, and I haven't explained the, the mechanics completely of loop invariance yet, and we're going to get to that in the next lecture because it's a bit detailed. But um, so the condition is not a loop invariant property. Uh, and the reason is because the loop invariant includes the last case when the condition is false. All right? So, um, so it's not quite. Um, it would be fair to say, though, and this can be useful sometimes, that that is a loop, in, is a loop invariant um, because that's including the last case. And that can be useful. But... But in this case, we don't need it, actually. But it is, it is a valid loop invariant. Yes? So when a loop invariant goes from the i of less than or equal to the last Yeah. So that's what we've got, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and that can be useful. I'll give you an example of where it's useful. Uh, no, no, actually, I won't, because that'll, that'll, I will we'll do in a minute, all right? Yeah. i is always greater than or equal to 0. OK. i is always greater than or equal to 0. OK, right. So let's, let's go with that. So um, if I compile this, and this is the tool helps us, right? If I had to run it, it would have given away too much. Um, index out of bounds, negative. And, and the thing that's going on here, if we look at it, we can see that i is 0, and we can see that i is incremented. And the way the system works is that for variables which are modified in the loop, the compiler doesn't know anything about those variables other than what you say in the loop invariant and actually and the condition as well. So it doesn't know that i is never negative. It's not that smart. So we need to actually tell it. Let's go like that. 
And if we do that, now we've got a loop invariant. Uh, and that, that one is necessary to verify this program. Although the other ones we looked at actually weren't necessary, this one is. So I want to show you, um, we'll just look at one more example before we go back to the flags problem, which is what I actually want to look at. Let's, 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 okay, now let's keep that actually because we need that. So I'm going to change my program a little bit, all right? So it's not actually doing a sum anymore, it's doing something else. Um, but I want to do this. I want to say that the value returned, what should I call this function, count or something stupid like that, right? Let's just go like this and in fact that's, that'll do, then I don't even need the loop invariant there. All right, so in this case, I basically just want to say that I've counted the number of items in the array, in the items array, all right? Um, and if we run this, it should say post condition not satisfied. So the question is, why? What do we know? If I was going to write an assertion here, let's say assert i something, what do we know about i at that point? Thoughts. Yeah, go on. No, no. It's never below zero. Uh, so we know that, but we haven't. So because we haven't put it in the um, the loop invariant, it doesn't know that. But if we added it to a loop invariant like this, then we would know this. Yeah, and we should be able to verify that. But it's it's still it's not helping us here. What else do we know? Yeah, go on. No, no, that's okay, because R, R is the return value here, so that's okay. No, it's not that. What do we know about the condition? Tell me about the condition, because we know that the condition is not true. Yes? Okay, so let's try that, because that's what we need for the post condition, isn't it? So let's try that. So we, we expect this. And in fact, it is true. That assertion is correct. But we have to go to, to understand why it's not verifying, we have to go back to the, the concept that the variable i is modified in the loop. And the only things we know are what are in the loop invariant and the loop condition. The fact that we started at zero and we keep going, well, we know that as humans, but the compiler doesn't know that. So what do we know here? We know, as we said already, that it's greater than or equal to zero. What else do we know if we got to this point? Greater than or equal to the length of items, right? Has to be, because the condition is false. So we should be able to verify that. And so now we can see that we're close, because we've proved that it's greater than or equal to the length, and all we're trying to do is prove that it's equal to it, not greater than or equal. And, and so we need to add something to our loop invariant which is going to help us figure that out. What might we add? What, if, 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 if I had i is greater than or equal to items plus something, it's going to give me i equals items. What's the piece of the jigsaw I'm missing? Go on, you're going to say something? No? Right? So if I had, um, let's just write it here for the moment. Right? That would imply it equaled items, right? So what I actually need to do to make this work, I need to add that as my loop invariant. And we already saw that that is a valid loop invariant. So let's go to that there. Um, oh. What have I done? Uh, ah, being a Muppet. Pardon my French. And that works now. All right? So don't be too worried if you haven't fully understood it yet, because we're going to come back and we're going to go through the mechanics again. Um, but it's illustrating the, why loop invariants are useful and why they can be a little bit tricky at times. OK, good. Good. Any questions about that? before we move on to the Dutch flag problemo. All good? Okay, cool. All right, sweet. Right.